Well friends, the 21st century is being considered as a century with a difference. People say that the wars are going to be fought not on the battlefields, there will be a knowledge war. The highways may be deserted later on, the information highway is picking up and uh, there will not be nuclear explosions, there will be a media explosion. With these kind of emerging trends in mind, we would like to bring you a panel discussion today highlighting the new trends and the policy issues involved and the applications of it. We have with us two well known media experts, one is Mr. K. Sharma. We welcome you sir, he is presently the additional secretary education ministry of human resource development. He had a long association with uh, Doordarshan. He was also a long working at the education ministry for a long, long time. And there is no better person who could talk about the emerging trends in uh, media technology than him who has got an experience in education as well as the media. We also have Mr. P. S. Sundaram, the chairman and managing director of the Broadcast Engineering Consultant India Limited. He had a long association with All India Radio and he was uh, the founder secretary of the Broadcast Engineering Society of India. He was doing a lot of research in the All India Radio R&D department and he is regarded as a visionary in this field. First, let me, I would like to ask Mr. Sharma a question that in this present scenario in the 21st century, what are his views? and what are his visions and what are possible and what are not possible. Mr. Sharma. Thank you. Firstly, even during the 20th century, which is coming to an end very shortly, India has produced the largest amount of software as far as film industry is concerned. As perhaps most of the viewers know, we produce more number of films than even Hollywood in India. Therefore, we are in a very strong position to continue that tradition of producing very high quality software, not only in the film industry, but in other emerging software lines also. As you all know, most of the software engineers who are flourishing not only in India, but elsewhere and particularly in USA are from India. This is quite well known. In fact, the Silicon Valley is made up of more Indians than anybody else as far as production of software is concerned. Therefore, my own feeling is that the entire media industry is driven by software and the content. Whatever may be the technology, the best technology, the latest technology, it will be of no use whatsoever unless the content is going to satisfy the viewers, particularly in the radio and television industry. Therefore, we have a built-in advantage. In fact, a lot of people whom we meet from outside India, they say that India is a country which is entertainment crazy. They haven't seen people who are more entertainment oriented than Indians. That is why we produce so many films. Therefore, as far as I see the future of our entertainment industry, the media industry, I have no doubt in my mind that we have a built-in advantage. Only thing required is to access the latest technology and marry the two. You are saying that whatever be the technology, the India has the capability to adapt it to itself and you give preference to more quality oriented software instead of rather than technology driven uh, uh, century. Am I correct? Technology is only 
kind of facilitator. What the viewer wants ultimately is most important. It's the content. And the content. And with the kind of population we have, and with the kind of what we may call the genes meant for entertainment that we have in our country, I'm sure we'll do good as we have shown it in the 20th century. In fact, our films are sold almost every part of the world. If I may take this point from here, if you look at the export of software, particularly in uh, children's films, in adventure films, apart from normal entertainment films, the leader ultimately today is US. No country has children's software as much as US has got. Everybody is importing the US children's software, dubbing them into their own languages. Now, our aim should be to see that this trend is reversed because the US people know that the entire industry is driven by software. And we should, in the process, develop the requisite manpower to produce this software. That's where courses like this that IGNO is uh, trying to introduce play a very vital role because we don't just have the requisite manpower, nor do we have institutions in this country which will let them acquire those skills in this area. It is by trial and error method. Even in film industry, it is just by working as assistant to somebody who is famous, working as somebody who is knowledgeable, people are acquiring these skills. There is no systematic, regulated way of developing these skills. And I do believe that IGNU has a tremendous role to play in developing this manpower. Recently, I was told that a Tamil film of Rajini Kant has earned as much as the film Titanic earned in Japan. I see. That there is a potential for our software and uh, uh, Mr. Sharma's observation that uh, the courses like we do starting nowadays will help us to produce more software personnel, which is the strength of the media in the US. Yeah. And we should also emulate and the trend should be reversed. Now, I pass on to Mr. Ramarao. Thank you. Content is the king, essentially, that is what you are Absolutely. emphasizing. That is uh, the sum and yes. substance of the discussion so far. While uh, it is uh, undoubtedly an undis undisputed fact as far as the content and software is concerned. Uh, what we equally uh, see as a very prominent uh, development uh, the globally is the changing technology. Many, many new technologies are in the offing, both on the radio front and on the television front and uh, on other uh, media as well, other than radio and television in the conventional sense. Uh, Mr. Sundaram, you have uh, worked a lot in these directions and uh, would you like to uh, tell what are going to be the emerging trends on the technology front? Uh, let me briefly explain the technological changes that are happening in the radio field, television field and the computer field. That is what we call today as an internet. As far as radio is concerned, we have been living with analog radio since 1927 in this country, almost 70 years. But things are changing very fast. This decade has seen introduction of digital technology, mm -hmm. thanks to the computer and communication technologies. So what is going to happen in future is the digital audio broadcasting, both in the form of a ground-based stations, that is the terrestrial broadcasting, we call it, mm -hmm. as well the satellite broadcasting from the satellite. The advantage of terrestrial broadcasting is you can have a local programs, you can have multiple programs on a single transmitter. Mm -hmm. you know, there is no need to have a one channel, one transmitter philosophy. You can put about six programs on a single transmitter. That is the content has to be created to feed to those programs. All these. Mm -hmm. In the case of satellite, about 100 channels could be put on one transponder. There is a program which is going on called a world space. That is a program of a starter from USA. They are going to launch about three satellites. One mm -hmm. satellite has already been launched, AFRISTAR. There are two more satellites to be launched to have a global coverage of multiple services programs, which would facilitate even exchange of programs from one country to another. Not only that, one could cover, sitting in India, you could cover the entire world beaming the program from India, mm -hmm. which was not possible in the normal mode of shortwave transmission, mm -hmm. which you used to do long back. So this technology is going to have a revolution, radio broadcasting, in the next decade next decade starting from the next millennium. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, digital technology permits data broadcasting 
or what we call as information broadcasting. Yeah. Today there is a need for people to have access to the information which is not happening today. Also. The broadcasting medium can put on the information in a free to air mode. There is no need to pay the money, mm -hmm. but get the access to the information, whether you sit in some village or some city, all these things. You no, need not depend on a wired circuit like a telecommunication. You can have access. This technology would help that. As far as the television is concerned, the digital television broadcasting is taking over. In fact, I would quote an example. In USA, there is a committee called Advanced Television Systems Committee and the Federal Communication Commission, they put a mandate. By 2006, all the analog transmission in USA, that is called the NTSC format, should cease to function and they should convert to digital technology mm -hmm. of various formats. They adopted a standard called the ATSC. But I don't know whether it would happen because you need a set-top box to add on to the television receiver. To my understanding, that is, this will take another 40 years to convert 88% of the population to have the set-top boxes. Yeah, so you have touched on, uh, sorry for the interjection, yeah. you have touched on a very vital point uh, which uh, even otherwise I was going to ask you. Yeah. The transition phase of any technology involves uh, a lot of upheaval as far as the reception sets are concerned, the general public at large what happens to the coexistence of the old and new technologies and things like that. So that also raises a host of social uh, issues. Whether technology per se is good for a change, just for change for change sake or we have to do something about it. Maybe how exactly yeah. this uh, transition can be managed? Would you like to? I am also coming to one more point. You are talking about DAB, which in essence is the counterpart of DTH for radio. Yeah, you can consider DTH means the direct to home service for as far as television is concerned. Mm. DAB is direct to portable radio. Mm. That means we are going to have, you are saying 100 channels in a track. Yes, in a 100 satellite. channels. That means I am going to listen to Zulu music yes, in Africa say, yeah, yeah. rather than we will be re knowing about what is happening to the tribals of Buster. No, you can do that. It depends on what content you put in on the satellite, all the satellite or the terrestrial medium. So it gives an opportunity, it gives a platform to exchange programs, to transmit programs to any region also. Mm -hmm. That comes to, I am also agreeable with uh, Mr. Ramarav and then it just comes to a very important question to Mr. Sharma. There are emerging technologies and the advanced countries as Mr. Sundaram says has already put a deadline by this time this they should change. And in India, you, Mr. Sundaram said 70 years we have lived with analog transmissions. And the government of India is also sometimes wants some technology to be adapted slowly in this country, some technology to be n not uh, needed for this country. And uh, what are these reasons? We only see in the newspapers that this technology will take some more time to come to the country. The government is examining the implications, negative and positive, where the, where the engineers are always painting a rosy picture. As uh, the administrator, I would like to know what are the reasons for the government thinking on delaying a technology? I think it's a, a very popular misconception that uh, government has any intention to stop any technology from coming into this country. It's very uh, unfortunate that uh, such a perception exists. But if you look at the way government has been allowing without any regulation whatsoever, so far the development particularly in the electronic media, one would be quite surprised. I don't know how many of the viewers know that in the print media, there is a definite policy of the government today not to permit any foreigner to come in and publish anything that he likes, mm -hmm. there's a ban or there's a bar on that. I have no views on that. It's an existing policy. You take the electronic media, it's totally free. What happened was that, as you all know, the entire satellite channel viewing started with the Gulf War in our country around the 90s, 91s. People went to five-star hotels to see booster antennas trying to project what was happening in the Gulf War and then little uh, cable operator setup got in and uh, we are seeing more channels today. 
government never stopped anybody from receiving any channel whatsoever. It was a fairly conscious policy to this extent that as you know in 91 there was totally a mood of liberalization. I am talking mostly in an academic uh, fashion. I have no particular intention to either say this government did this and that government did that and therefore this is wrong, that was right. No, we are purely looking at it as academics. Yes. And in 91, there was a total mood of liberalization. And prior to 91, as you all know, even to possess a videotape recorder or to possess a dish antenna at your own home, you required license around 85, 86. Mm -hmm. Then people found, that is policy makers, administrators found that it is not feasible to implement that. And it is not worth doing it because people want to see, want to have more information. It is a fundamental right. Therefore, the restrictions on possessing videotape recorders or possessing dish antennae in the country have been removed by the Department of Telecom, except it still exists in some border states. So, it is a conscious policy to allow as much information, as much that can be accessed by our people. And until recently, everything to us through television was coming in what is called C-band. We allowed it from 91 to 96, 97, we allowed it to happen. In fact, the Ministry of INB brought out a cable law also in the meanwhile to somehow regulate the cable operators to some extent because people were getting these channels through cable operators mostly, though there are some who get them directly through their own dish antenna. Now, at that time, at the government of that period wanted to introduce a broadcast bill, which will bring in regulation into the whole electronic media field or the broadcasting scene. It is necessary because there is no country worth its name which has no regulation. Regulation does not mean control. Regulation means facilitator and ultimately consumer to be protected. It is mm -hmm. a consumer who is the king apart from the content. Unless the consumer likes the content, all this technology will be of no use to us. So, and what we saw at that time was that in the C-band, unregulated growth did not help us. It was felt that there will be some kind of a self-regulation by the channels, which was not taking place. And most parliamentarians, public were complaining about lot of things that we would not like to see on the TV coming in. Therefore, we felt that we should have some regulation. In that context, they said, if anybody wants to come in with the new technology, please wait a minute, mm. we are getting some regulation so that you could follow these regulations. Unfortunately, that did not happen. You see, whatever, uh, you know, we all know that uh, like okay. King Canute, you can't stop the waves. <laughs> so, I am mm. coming to another point. Uh, you have raised a very valid point that the consumer must be protected and the government is trying to come out with regulation and government has no intention of stopping a technology. Not at all. Uh, you are with, with your wide experience, uh, can you little give more uh, ideas on how many countries in the world are having such kind of regulations and uh, what are the main reasons for allowing a channel or not allowing a channel? That there must be a broadcast code. Similarly, there must be a, some transnational satellite broadcasting. There must be some code. There are. Mm. There are. In fact, uh, uh, in most countries, apart from uh, those regulatory bodies like the Federal Communications Commission or the Independence uh, Television Commission in UK, etc., there are bodies which look into the content exclusively, yes. like broadcast councils, yes. those who decide whether a particular program has adhered to a given code or not. After all, the entire intention is to see, first of all, that children do not get exposed to something which would not like them to get exposed to. For example, today in US, the demand of the parents is that like, you know, when you purchase a drug or some medicine, you want to know what is its content, what is its expiry date, mm. 
mm. and uh, easy to be taken by adults, children, etc. Today, the parents are demanding in US, before telecasting a program, they would like certain ratings of the program. It has 20% violence, 30% adult viewing, or this is essentially for children. The parent wants to make a choice for the child before letting the child see the program. Mm -hmm. We have come to that stage where the viewers are saying, I would like to know before I see it, what it has got. Is it sports? Is it violence? Is it something that adults only can see? What percentage? And that should come on the screen so that the parent decide, just as we as parents decide that our child should eat this, should not eat that. So, if that is the level up to which you would like to protect your own culture, your own value system, there is definitely need for somebody to say this is on, this is not on. So and each culture will have its own uh, systems to decide that. Mm. In fact, a lot of people value tell system. us, you know, a yeah. lot of people tell us, how is it uh, the uh, foreign movies are different from your own uh, movies which are also not bereft of violence, which are also not bereft of certain uh, uh, adult scenes Absolutely. which perhaps children should not see. Mm. There, our academic answer is, look, it's our independent decision, our censor board, we make these decisions. We may make wrong decisions, but we should be in a position to make, the decision. make these decisions. That we are not able to do now. That That's what we would like to that you know, means there is a strong need for a SEBI like thing. Some to kind of regulation, you know, to water. facilitate. Otherwise, it is uh, becoming uh, a war between people who have very deep pockets and monopolies developing over the years, in spite of all the restrictions. And it's an intention. After all, you see, even in US or UK, these things are now developed overnight. There were no restrictions earlier, even in US. Gradually, they have developed. By trial and error method, every one of us learns. Therefore, one small step taken by Department of Telecom uh, at the instance of, let's say, Ministry of INB to say, well, in this, we have learned some experience. We don't want free entry. Okay. We want certain regulation. We are trying to regulate them. Therefore, please wait for a while. Well, wait for a while. You can't ask them to wait indefinitely. Hmm. That okay. is well understood. Okay. But at that point of time, it was thought that the regulation will be in place any moment. The bill was introduced in the parliament. Mm -hmm. And we said it can take any moment to get mm -hmm. it passed. Otherwise, you are going to preempt the parliament also mm -hmm. by letting somebody enter into an area where we feel we may be right, we may be wrong. But so long as you are in a position to, you know, steer certain courses of action, the view you take somewhat prevails. Yes, sir. Uh, we would like to know a little more in depth, uh, C band versus other bands, KU band and things like that. What are the disadvantages or advantages uh, in the context of uh, the newer technologies? What kind of bands of operation are desirable what for a country like ours? Technological limitations also you can mm. tell us. Uh, when uh, satellite television broadcasting started, they mm. started with S band in the frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. In the site uh, days? The site experiment, mm -hmm. 1976 or 66 sometime also. Later on, when the technology developed, they moved to C-band. Mm -hmm. C-band is between 4 to 6 gigahertz, mm -hmm. or we can call it uh, in the form of megahertz, 6,000 megahertz all this. This frequency is shared with the terrestrial frequencies. Many people use for the terrestrial communications. Mm -hmm. That's the disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And the other disadvantage is you have to use a large dish antenna, whether you need it for an uplinking or for receiving the signal. Mm. Also. So disadvantage is essentially by way of interference from the terrestrial service. Yeah, you need to have a… Yeah. the cable operators also use a C-band. The cable operator receives in the C-band, mm. distribute in the normal band, mm. that band 1, band 3, all these things. As far as the K band is concerned, it has got the disadvantage of rainfall attenuation. Mm -hmm. That is whenever there is a rainfall, dust storm, even the oxygen particles, that attenuates the signal. So, you need to have a high power satellite, high power signal. But the advantage is you can have a smaller dish antenna, mm -hmm. which is about 18 inch normally, which is used for the K band reception. What we see behind. Huh? Yeah, this is the one like that, all this. Okay. 18 inch compared to about 12 feet of a C band signal mm -hmm. reception, all this. But as far as the electronics is concerned, which is after the dish, it is going to be the common, mm -hmm. nothing different in that. 
because the disc converts the signal whether the K band or the C band to a another frequency called L band. Mm -hmm. Once it is converted, the electronics remain the same. Mm -hmm. But the advantage of K band is every home can afford to have a small dish antenna, unlike a bigger dish antenna 12 feet of a C band. And the service provider can have conditional access, that is, you can lock a receiver if the payment is not made. Mm -hmm. You can mount a program as a pay per view. As Sarmaji said, the adult program, all these things, it can be given with all the codes, all these things. Mm -hmm. So the parental lock can be done, all these things. All these facilities are possible in the KU band transmission. Mm -hmm. C band also it's possible, but it is going to be expensive because transponder limitation, mm -hmm. the dish antenna size, all these things. That's why people have gone for the KU band transmission mm -hmm. as far as DTH is concerned. But for the viewers, what is most important about KU band is that the picture quality in KU band will be 100 times better than the picture quality in C band and the sound quality will be 10 times better. That's why people are keen to see pictures in KU band. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have they omitted can. it, but mm -hmm. that's Never what do. the viewer has to know, first of all, that that is why there is so much great demand for this, because... But uh, are we not defeating the aim of information flow, information highway to the people by restricting, there's no, you can lock it, you can do that to here in KU band. The flow of information is as, a, as you mean to say, free, it's a free to air. Why, uh, why pay free to pay through? Uh, it's going to the, pay, the viewer is going to pay through his nose. No, the broadcaster channels. has to mount the program, produce the program, transmit it. It requires cost. Mm -hmm. No, no, it no. Money. I think more important thing is mm -hmm. that the right to information, In right which information. is part of right to freedom of expression, yes. mm -hmm. is not unlimited. You mm -hmm. can't say I would like to receive anything that I want. No. Any right to, any fundamental right is subject to certain reasonable restrictions. Mm -hmm. What these reasonable restrictions are, the, they are decided by the society. Society through a system. After all, society is a... Uh, is a dynamic is thing a, and... Uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher said there is nothing like a society. <laughs> Sir, in the I won't go that far, but what I would say is that... Society decides upon itself yeah. to give this responsibility to certain public body. We adopt certain systems. So we are trying to adopt a system whereby some public body in whom we have trust and which I, we believe will improve its functioning over the years. It may make mistakes. What we think are mistakes, they may not think they are mistakes, but it will grow and mature itself over years. That's what is important. Now, what exactly is then uh, holding on, holding up the government from, uh, say, approving uh, KU band services uh, as at the moment? Um, is there any uh, any essential uh, criteria which the government kept in view? The the only reason, whether it's a valid reason or not, it's not for people like us to comment. The only reason that it has been kind of put on hold, as I reiterate, was that. When we let people come in C band freely mm -hmm. for the last five, six years without any regulation whatsoever, it did not work out the way we thought it would. Since we are anyway bringing certain regulation into C band transmission also, well, let people wait until we work out this regulation. And we thought at that time that the regulation will come in a few months or uh, not more than nine months at that time because the bill was already introduced. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as you know, uh, today NIC does KU band transmission for data. Yeah. It is yes. being put to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, there will be definitely, I am sure, as I uh, know things are happening on the VSAT operation front. Since the extended C bands are not available anymore for VSAT operators, there is a tremendous demand for opening up KU band for uh, VSAT operators. Yeah. So I don't think anybody is uh, per se against this. So thank you, Mr. Sharma, and thank you, Mr. Sundram. Thank this you. discussion has been very useful. It has, I hope uh, so. <laughs> it has given us the, an insight into the emerging technologies and the new trends. And it has also cleared a lot of misconceptions that the government is not in any way holding the technology or delaying the technology. The technology is being used by some operators already. Only some regulatory body is being formulated by the parliament. The moment it is over, the technology is open. 
and the whole world many countries have this regulatory body to safeguard the integrity and the cultural uh, uh, uniqueness of the country. I hope this uh, discussion on audio video technology has helped our students as well as general listeners. Thank you.